Hello dear students, welcome to Axiomaticos. This video is the part of the solution series for IIT Jam 2012. So we are here with this problem 10 of your paper. So let us have a look on this problem. This problem is from the topic uh, linear algebra and it says that let W be a vector space over R and T such that R6 to W is a linear transformation such that this set S which is defined like this TE2, TE4, TE6 spans W. Which one of the following must be true? So these are your options, right? So firstly, I will try to make the question clear to you. What is given in the question is that T is a transformation from R6 to W. Now you know that this R6 is actually a finite dimensional vector space. That means what you can do here, you can always use rank nullity theorem, right? I'm not saying that it, this question will be done by rank nullity theorem, but what I am saying that since you got a finite dimensional vector space, so that thing is always in your hand, rank nullity theorem. So these are, these are the things that you have to keep noting, what you can use, what you cannot use, right? So now it's given to you that they are defining a set like this, which is like TE2, TE4, TE6. Now what is what are these E uh, what are these E2, E4, E6? These are the actually the standard basis for R. So if I say B is a basis, is a standard basis for R6, then I actually means that B is equal to this set. 1, 0, 0. 0, 1, 0, 0, and up to what? 0, 0, 0, 1. Are you getting my point? So this element is actually known as E1. This element is known as E2. This element is known as E6. Are you getting my point? So E2 actually means 1 in the second place. E1 actually means 1 in the first place. E6 means 1 in the sixth place. Are you getting my point? So I hope now everything is clear to you. Okay, so right now I'm showing you the rank nullity theorem. What it says that let T such that U to V be a linear transformation where U is a finite dimensional vector space, then rank of T plus nullity of T is equal to dimension of U. Why I am showing you this right now? Because one of the option actually needs this. So firstly, what I am going to do, I am going to solve this D part. This is why I am doing this because the, uh, this was a very easy, okay, very easy option to look on. So firstly, see what's given to you. It was given to you that this set S, which is defined earlier, has a special purpose. That span of S is actually W. Now, if you know the definition for basis, what it says, it says that uh, if B is a basis for a vector space V, B is a basis for vector space V actually means that span of B is uh, V and B is Li. These are the two properties that we have. So this is called the definition for basis. So B is said to be a basis for the vector space V. If B, okay, this of course is a subset. This of course is a subset of V. If span of B is vector space itself and B is linearly independent. So this is the definition for basis. Now this, this is going to help us very much because you see span of B is actually V which is already given to us right span of s is w so the only thing that we need here is that b is li are you getting my point now suppose b is li or suppose not b is uh, is, 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 a, is ld but what is very constant here that 
dimension of w cannot exceed 3 because bs is a spanning set that means it consists of elements which can be which which will be inside your basis are you getting my point or not suppose this set is a ld set then what you will do you will remove the element which is linearly dependent and after that this it will be a basis are you getting my point suppose this t e6 can be written as the linear combination of these two then what you will do in order to make this as a basis you have to remove t e6 and if suppose these two are ld then what you will do you will remove these two that means your basis will always be constructed from your set s so dimension what is dimension number of elements inside the basis so it cannot exceed three i hope you got that point it's very easy to see it from here so this was the important catch of the question okay that's why i have chosen your d option to solve now since dimension of w is less than three so from here what you can say okay so what do you know about uh, range okay range of t what do you know about range of t range of t is will always be a subset a subspace sorry is a subspace of w that's your codomain right so range of t is a subspace of w that you already know that means range of t has dimension less than equal to 3 even if it is on 2 then also it will have dimension at most 3 okay so from here what you are getting that range of t dimension okay i should write dimension dimension of range of 3 is less than equal to 3 so dimension of range of 3 means rank of t so you have proved finally that rank of t is less than equal to 3 now since rank of t is less than equal to 3 now let us apply rank nullity theorem over here so see rank of t plus nullity of t is equal to dimension of u what is dimension of u in your case it's 6 now this thing is less than equal to 3 that means null space of t is always greater than or equal to 3 are you getting my point or not so finally you have proved that null space will have dimension more than 3 and in your d option it says kernel of t contains more than one element so since its dimension is greater than 3 so it will obviously contains more element are you getting my point since its dimension is 3 so we are done so that means this will be this is a correct option so that means all remaining options are actually incorrect now what we can do for the knowledge purpose here that we have we can find out counter so in this question finding out count counter will be little bit a uh, time taking process or you can say time taking um, something which you have to use your much much of the brain there but to prove d option it's very easy to prove that why it will contain more than one element that's why i have solved d first now what i will do i will try to uh, produce some counter for a b and c okay and also for you it's an exercise that you try to find it out yourself what will be the counters for a b c right so now what i will do i will just clear my space here okay so now let us try to find out some counters so let us begin with your a option okay i should change my ink so you're getting my point everything or not okay if not you can always comment me or you can just join our group for such queries okay it's always in the description part so now c first option says s is a basis for w now i already show you the definitions for basis basis means spanning set as well as li now it's given to you that it's a spanning set for w now you have to check whether it is a lie or not so i will choose my w to be just r okay the real vector space and my transformation is from r6 to r now i am defining my transformation okay so t of e1 is 0 and t of ei is non-zero for all sorry i wrote the okay wait wait a second 
okay so let me okay so you can choose any number here let us say t of e1 is just one it's a non-zero number you can take any number that you want i will write here one just okay so if you don't want zero that means you can write just one that t of e1 is actually equal to one right so uh, it should be better with it if i will erase this okay so t of e1 is one and t of e i is zero for all i greater than equal to two that means uh, after one i am fixing everything to zero now you see uh, sorry sorry i should do it for t e2 okay okay i will erase everything that's my fault i okay so what i will do i will fix my e2 to be 1 and t of e i to be 0 for all i not equal to 2 so what i am doing i am fixing my e2 to 1 right now you know that real vector space has a dimension 1 so if you will place if you in if inside a set you place a non zero element then it will always be a spanning set okay so t e2 inside this set s okay e4 i think and then t of e6 so you see this is 1 this is 0 and this is 0 now since it contains a non zero element that means it will always span your r are you getting my point so just apply the definition that why this set s will span r what i am doing right now i am trying to show that this transformation actually satisfies your hypothesis that is given in your question that span of s is w and w i have chosen to be r so you see it is a spanning set but it's not a linearly independent set why because we have zero inside this set once you got zero inside any set then this set cannot be a linearly independent set that you already know okay if you don't know just try to prove that you consider any set and put zero inside it so that set now will be called a ld set okay use the definition to prove this thing so you see s is ld but it spans r that means oh sorry ld that means s is not a basis s is not a basis so that means a is your incorrect option now for the second one what it says it says that t of r6 is not equal to w now what i for the okay so i should mark a is incorrect right now let me uh, prove your b option on your question itself so it says t of r6 is not equal to w so it's an incorrect one because you know that just by these three element you are saying that it's going to span your set w what does that mean it means that range of t this is called range range of t is a spanning set for w are you getting my point or not so that means that range of t has dimension same as it of w so it's equal to w okay from this thing we can say that it's equal to w because it's a spanning set now it says t of e1 e3 and e5 spans w so you can take the same counter which i have chosen in your a option are you getting my point so by this a counter that i have chosen you can show that it's not going to span w because it's a zero set t e1 is zero t e3 is zero t e5 is zero that means it's not going to span w so that means third is incorrect so this is how you can find out counters for a b c but i will always prefer to prove d in your exam okay suppose i am sitting in your exam to take this exam i will prove d okay instead of trying to find out counters because in this case it was easy because you for the, the counter for a will also work for c and b is an obvious option that it's incorrect so that's why it becomes easy but d is much easier to prove okay so thank you